Okay, everyone, I'm back today to talk about a horror comedy that was released earlier in 2023 on Netflix, Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead, a Japanese film directed by Yusuke Ishida. It's also a manga and an anime series, which I have neither read nor watched, respectively. But that tracks, because tonally, this is one of those Asian genre films that really does feel like a live-action anime or live-action cartoon or comic book. Which might put some people off, but that part worked fine for me. In no small part because, as you might expect from an Asian genre film, it's a very slick production, well made, with good cinematography and some expertly choreographed zombie sequences. Which actually managed to muster a couple of genuinely tense moments despite the overall comedic tone. There's even a jump scare near the end that might be the best of its kind since Deep Blue Sea. The film revolves around a young man named Akira who has recently entered the workforce and starts out idealistic but quickly starts feeling like a nameless, faceless corporate drone who is overworked and underpaid. Then when the zombie apocalypse rears its head, he feels liberated and elated and decides to spend whatever time he has left before he becomes a zombie, checking off all the boxes on his bucket list of things that he wants to do before he dies. And along the way, he forms a bit of a team and a bond with several other people who have been thrust into the apocalypse along with him. Our three leads are very well cast and played, and they do make for an interesting team to watch and spend time with along the way even if the movie does spend way too much time getting bogged down in the usual road trip bonding cliches. I can appreciate that they were trying to pack an entire series worth of story into a single feature, but I still think you could have trimmed away some of the second act of the story, especially when you consider where the movie arrives for its third act. But the third act does bring things back on track very nicely with some charmingly ridiculous action comedy, and even a moment where a Junji Ito monster shows up. I mean, not literally, but it might as well be. It kind of comes out of nowhere, but it ends up walking away with several of the best and funniest moments in the entire movie. One little plot thread in particular is paid off so hilariously that I almost laughed out loud. Still, at almost 2 hours and 10 minutes, the runtime does feel a little bit long for the kind of dramedy satire that they're going for. And while our protagonist Akira does grow in some ways over the course of the story, he's also grotesquely narcissistic and self-absorbed. I was never really sure if the movie really understood how much he had his head up his ass or not. Plus the movie just beats you over the head with messages about work-life balance and being yourself, and it does it in such a basic way that it kind of makes me feel like this whole franchise is geared toward a bit of a younger demographic than me. Someone around the age of our heroes in this movie would probably dig the hell out of this. However, as someone who's a little older and wiser and understands that it takes a little bit more than free spirit to abide in the real world, I was frequently amused and entertained by this movie, but never amazed. The manga and the anime probably expand on the story in ways that I would appreciate, but based on this, I feel like this franchise isn't for me. It's a good place to start if you're on the fence, because it's at least cohesive enough that it gives you a good overview of what this particular franchise is all about. But personally, I'm off the fence. It was fun enough, but it's a one and done for me. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're all having an awesome day, and I will be hitting you up with more content soon. Take care.